Hello students, today we are going to have a look of mathematical treatment of refraction at spherical surfaces as we have already learned that what is a lens, a spherical lens and at the lenses how the refraction takes place we want to have a mathematical look on it. Now we are today going to have just a general look on the mathematical treatment of refraction at spherical surfaces. For this purpose, let's have a refractive surface which is actually spherical. This is a convex spherical surface we are taking. This is the medium in which the light ray after refraction will move. And as we know, there is a principal axis which is always defined with respect to the pole and the center of curvature of the surface. Now, this is say, this is say the line x, y and this is the principal axis of the refractive surface. Now, if at point O, there is an object and let we have an incident ray which is incidenting from the object to the incident to the refracting surface say its name is S P S dash now if the refractive index of medium 1 is N1 and medium 2 is N2 where it is provided that N2 is greater than N1 that is the second medium is denser than the medium 1. Now if the second medium is more denser then the light ray will move towards the normal where normal is taken to be here it will be at 90 degree angle to the surface and it will intersect the principal axis at the center of curvature C. Now if we talk about the refracted ray it will bend towards the normal and thus it will move in this manner. So let we have this incident point as A and this point where the refracted ray meets the principal axis as B. Now if we talk about the incident angle it is angle I which is formed in between the normal and the incident ray and this is the angle of refraction which is formed in between the refracted ray and the normal. This is the normal which is here shown by the blue color and here it is named as N N dash. Now if we want to have a geometrical idea, a mathematical idea of this refraction, let's have another line which is normal to the principal axis and it is drawn from, let's have normal which is drawn from A and it is extended to the principal axis. This angle is obviously 90 degree and let this point is in let this point is M. Here, for our convenience, we are saying that this angle is alpha. This angle is beta. And the angle between normal and the principal axis is gamma. Now here, we can have once, we, we can have a one look more on the diagram. Here, this N2 Refractive index is the refractive index of the medium which is drawn under the lines, under the blue lines here shown. The refractive surface is a spherical surface and an object is taken from which incident ray falls on the incident point A. At this point, the light ray suffers the refraction and that's why it bends towards the normal. Normal is here denoted by NN dash. And this ray after refraction meets the principal axis at B. 
The angle between this refracted ray and the principal axis is denoted by beta. This normal and the principal axis is denoted by gamma and the object incident ray and the principal axis is denoted by alpha. I is the angle of incidence and R is the angle of refraction. Now here in this diagram by the external angle property so by the exterior angle property of a triangle applied in uh, the triangle OAC can write that angle I is the exterior angle and it should be equal to sum of interior opposite angles which are alpha and gamma so it is equation 1 in triangle ABC we can see that if gamma is taken to be the exterior angle then its sum should be equal to opposite interior angles which are R and beta so we can say that R that is refracted angle or angle of refraction can be written as gamma minus beta and this equation will be named as equation 2 now here in this all mathematical process we have taken some assumption and the first assumption is that this refracting surface is of very small aperture and that's why the all angles here alpha beta gamma are very small angles so the assumption is taken that the surface aperture is very small which implies that alpha beta gamma angles are very small if it is so then 10 alpha should be equivalent to alpha then beta should be equivalent to beta and 10 of gamma is equivalent to gamma only. Now from the diagram and from the geometry of the diagram we can easily find out what are the values of alpha, beta and gamma. For the value of alpha we can see that here in this triangle AMO here AMO we can have the value of alpha as the perpendicular upon base here in this triangle perpendicular is AM and base is OM so alpha can be written as AM upon OM while this gamma in this triangle ACM we can have its value again in terms of AM which is perpendicular in this triangle also and AMC which is the base in this triangle. So again for uh, angle beta we can see that AM is again the perpendicular and MB is the base. So we can write that 10 alpha should be equivalent to alpha which is equal to AM upon OM and beta should be equivalent to AM upon OB and gamma should be equivalent to AM upon MC. So this is equation say 3, it's 4 and it's number 5. Now if we want to write the values in expressions for I and R then we can have the value of angle I and R in terms of the geometry we have drawn here. So let's write I is equal to from equation 1 it is equivalent to alpha plus gamma so we can write it as AM upon OM plus AM upon MC also R is equivalent to gamma minus beta so it should be equal to AM upon MC minus AM upon R is equal to AM upon MC minus AM upon MB. If we are again going to the diagram, then we can see here that we have taken the virtual 
to be very small and that's why we can say that these two points P and M will coincide if the aperture is so small. So we can take all the distances from P also and in this approximation we are again using the assumption of the aperture to be very small. Here we can write I as approximately equal to AM separated from bracket 1 by O P plus 1 by P C here AM 1 by P C minus 1 by P B. Now what is the use of taking all the distances from the pole? Because they have the significant values as we can say that the distance of O from the pole is taken to be the object distance which is denoted by U. If you take the distance from pole to the point B, it will be the distance which is obtained by, which is taken in between the image and the pole is V and the distance from pole to this C point is the radius of curvature of the surface and here the image will form because we are taking the two rays which are moving from O one is shown as such and here we can have the another ray which is passing from O incidenting perpendicularly or at P and thus meeting at the first incident ray at point B. So here the image will be formed and this distance can be taken as V. Now if we move on further we can take that by applying the Snell's law as we are studying. So by the application of Snell's law here as we are studying the refraction we can write sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction is equal to refractive index with respect to refractive index of refractive index of medium 2 with respect to refractive index of medium 1 as the angles are very small so it can be taken as n1 into i is equal to n2 into r so this is the equation we can say here this is equation 6 this is 7 and this is equation number 8 well equation 8 is giving the relation between refractive index of medium 1 and 2 and angle of incidence and angle of refraction as we have calculated all the angles i and r in terms of the geometry we have drawn so we can put the values from equation 6 and 7 in equation 8 and by the application of 6 and 7 in equation 8 we can write n1 into am so we get the values n1 am bracket 1 by op plus 1 by pc equivalent to n2 into am bracket 1 by pc minus 1 by p so by this equation we can have n1 upon op plus n1 upon pc is equal to n2 upon pc minus n2 upon p we can rearrange the equation and write it as n1 upon op plus n2 upon pb is equal to n2 upon pc minus n1 upon pc now by the sign convention we have that the distances which are taken moving opposite to the incident ray are negative while in the direction of incident ray these are taken to be positive as op is the distance of object from the pole so it is taken to be negative that is op is equal to minus u pb is the distance of 
image from the pole and it is taken to be positive because we are moving in the direction of incident ray. So we can say PB is equals to V and again the center of curvature is also positive distance. So PC is also taken to be positive R. So above equation can be written as N1 upon minus U plus N2 upon V is equals to N2 minus N1 upon R. And this equation in another way can be written as minus N2 upon V plus N1 upon U is equal to N1 minus N2 upon R. So this is what we are getting for the refraction at spherical surface. This equation is very useful when we are calculating the lens makers formula. So we will directly use this equation for the derivation of lens makers formula which is very important formula and it relates the object distance, the image distance and the focal length and the radii of curvatures of the lens.